Uh, okay, so last time we started talking about the real world protocols, uh, chapter 10. Uh, I think we're going to cover most of this. You know, usually I end up cutting out a couple things here, but you know, I like this material. Uh, I think we'll cover it, and then it will really make it a real crunch at the end to try and get in some of the you know stuff in the last three chapters. We'll probably do three chapters in a couple of lectures, so we'll be cutting out a lot of stuff there, uh, but we'll still hit the most important stuff. Uh, okay, so I want to look at SSH, which uh, we did kind of briefly look at last time, but we'll go over that uh, again. So it really is a simple protocol, but very useful, you know, and widely used. Uh, and then SSL, which is you know probably the most widely used pro you know security protocol in the in the known universe, right? Uh, it's used a lot. You know, all the stuff you do on the internet when you see, you know, uh, you know, uh, the little key show up in your browser. Okay, you're using SSL. When you see, you know, HTTPS, you're using SSL. So, you know, so it's it's, it's used a lot. Uh, and then we'll talk about IPsec. Uh, again, SSL is actually a pretty nice protocol. It's not too complex or anything like that. Uh, IPsec is is different. Okay, IPsec is. Uh, the purpose is basically the same as SSL, but the complexity is much greater. Okay, so you know we have to spend a, quite a bit of time talking about uh, IPsec, uh, and then Kerberos it's, is something really different. Um, you know, all these other protocols are essentially uh, relying on public key cryptography, um, and uh, Kerberos, and they use nonces, right? So Kerberos is different; it relies on symmetric keys, and it uses timestamps. So, and it is widely used as well, okay? So it's available on Windows. Uh, it's used a lot, say, on your local net, local area network uh, to secure transactions there. Uh, then we'll talk about a couple of wireless protocols. Um, you know, I can never decide which of those to talk about. You know, I usually just cover one, but we'll do both, okay? Why not? Uh, WEP is pretty interesting. It's not that, you know, it's not really used much uh, anymore. It shouldn't be used at all. <laughs> it has lots of security problems. But it's kind of interesting to look at just to see what the problems are there. Uh, and GSM is also, you know, at least in principle, ha has a lot of flaws. But um, uh, in practice, you know, it's kind of a different story. That's kind of an interesting case. A lot of stuff comes up there when we talk about GSM. It kind of ties together a lot of stuff we've talked about. Okay. So that's where we're going. Okay. So uh, SSH, first of all, the secure shell. So uh, again here, uh, shell... This doesn't refer to like Unix shell or anything like that, right? It's shell as in, I guess, a protective coding for your, uh, uh, for your transactions. So the idea here is that you have a lot of uh, things you might want to do over the network that are inherently insecure. Uh, for example, if you want to do a remote login, okay? What do you do when you do a remote login? What information do you have to provide to log in? Username and password. So if you do nothing else, you're sending this information over the network where anybody can see the packets going back and forth and they can see your password, right? So how can you make that transaction secure? Well, that's the kind of thing that SSH was designed for. Okay? So the idea is that first you establish an SSH connection, okay? And that then encrypts and integrity, you know, encrypts the rest of the messages you send. So now if you send some remote login, that information is encrypted, so Trudy can't just snip those packets and uh, see what you're doing. So it's a, it's a secure tunnel, you know, it's a, usually the way they describe it, okay? Uh, and it's a pretty simple protocol as far as these things go. All right. Okay, now the authentication in SSH is pretty flexible. You can use it in different ways. Uh, you can base uh, the authentication on public keys uh, or digital certificates or or, or uh, passwords, okay? Um, this is uh, certainly the most secure method using, uh, you know, legitimate digital certificates. So we'll, we'll look at that. Uh, the other two methods, you know, they're sort of watered down versions, but, you know, they're things that you would actually, <coughs> use, you know, people do use in practice. Uh, those uh, you'll see in the homework problem, okay? Because they are pretty interesting uh, and they're you know, definitely uh, closely related here. Okay, so we'll look at the certificate mode. And as with most of these protocols we look at, uh, it's gonna be somewhat simplified, okay? So we're not looking at the full-blown protocol. If you go look up the specification, you go, oh my God, what were we talking about in class? It doesn't look anything the same. Well, it is the same, okay? The basic messages are all there. 
Uh, there's a few things cut out. In this case, there's like some bookkeeping stuff you have to keep track of that you know, just eliminate it and cut a few messages out and whatnot. But the basic security uh, features are all here. Okay, so here we go. Uh, Alice and Bob. Alice is the client. Bob is the server. server. Okay, there you go. Okay, so Alice starts off and she says, hey, I'm Alice, right? Uh, and this CP means crypto proposal. So she's saying, uh, she's proposing some parameters for the cryptography they're going to use. You know, the key sizes, the, you know, if you're using uh, Diffie-Hellman, what are we going to use for P and G, you know, that sort of stuff, those kind of crypto parameters. And she sends a nonce, R sub A. Bob, he selects, okay, crypto is selected. So he's selecting from the proposal. He says, okay, you like 128-bit or 256-bit AES keys? Well, I like 256, so let's use that, you know, and so on. So they've negotiated those important crypto parameters. Uh, he sends his hands, okay. Uh, then Alice comes back with G to the A mod P. Okay, G to the A mod P. What are they doing here? Diffie-Hellman. They're doing Diffie-Hellman. Why do you do Diffie-Hellman in a protocol? Yes. To establish a key, okay, but when you establish the key, what's the benefit of using Diffie-Hellman as opposed to just sending a key in crypto or something? CFS. Yeah, okay, so they're getting this perfect forward secrecy, so it's, it's built into this protocol. Okay, so Alice chooses her random value, sends a G to the A mod P. Bob sends back his value along with his certificate, and this is kind of the crucial thing, okay, this uh, S sub B, okay, what is that? Well, he takes a whole bunch of stuff here, you know, Alice, Bob, Crypto, all these messages, all the stuff that showed up in the previous messages, basically, uh, along with the nonces, and hashes all that stuff together, okay, and then signs it, okay. Now, uh, Alice then comes back with something even worse, okay. She uh, sends her name, her certificate, and a comparable thing, okay, it's basically the same thing, but signed by, by Alice. Uh, and it's all encrypted uh, with this key K. Okay, what's K? Our good friend G to the A, B, mod P. Um, okay, so, okay, so there's the protocol. Now the question is, who's authenticated, who's not, you know, is the key protected, and all that sort of stuff. Okay, so how about uh, Alice here? Should she be convinced that she's talking about Yes, because SB is signed by Bob. That's right. Okay. Okay. Who could do this? Who could sign this? Only Bob. How do you know it's current? How do you know it's not a replay? Right. Because R sub A is in there. Okay. In order to compute this, Bob has to hash R sub A and then he has to sign it. So it's current. So Trudy cannot just record an old conversation and replay it because R sub A is involved. Okay. Now, why do they put in all this other stuff? All we really need is R sub A signed here, right? Okay. To make it look more secure. <laughs> yeah, it would be too simple otherwise, and I wouldn't have any questions to ask you on the test. I mean, come on. Well, okay. like, doesn't some of that need to be in there so that there can't be some sort of like man in the middle? Yeah, okay, and we'll see that in just a second. Now, actually, what's really going on is that all this stuff, all this extra stuff, you're really getting an integrity check. You're just checking to make sure those messages that were received is what was actually sent, okay? That's the way to think of it. Um, so they do serve a purpose, okay? It's not actually required for the authentication, but it does prevent certain other, uh, other attacks. Uh, okay, now S of A is very similar. I don't know why they put some extra junk in there. You know, Alice and her certificate and sign it. But the same point, okay? Bob has sent his challenge, mm -hmm. right, to Alice. Okay, it has to be signed by Alice, so it has to be current. It cannot be a replay. Okay, so mutual authentication. Looks good. What about the key? Is the key protected here? Well, okay, we're doing Diffie Hellman, right? Diffie Hellman is subject to what kind of attack? Man in the middle. Man in the middle attack. Well, why can't Trudy just do a man in the middle attack? Well, okay, well, let's try. We're Trudy. Let's do a man in the middle attack. Okay, here they go. They're using SSH, right? So Alice starts off and sends, you know, her crypto proposal. I cut that out because I didn't have room to put it here. But basically sends her name and her nonce. Okay, I'm Trudy. I don't care about that. Send it on to Bob. Okay, Bob comes back. And he sends his nonce along with his crypto selected stuff, right? Well, I didn't have I got lazy and put that. Okay, so Trudy sends that back. 
Uh, now, Alice sends what? G to the A. G to the A, okay. Well, this is the part where Trudy cares, okay. So what's Trudy gonna send? G to the T, mod T, okay. Well, this man in the middle, tack looks easy, right? Okay. Now Bob comes back with his, uh, some stuff and his uh, Diffie Hellman value mod P, right? So Alice just passes all that along, except changes G to the B to G to the T mod P, okay. And uh, uh, Alice comes back with her quantities and so on and so forth. Okay. Yeah, but there's a problem there. It's better not work, okay? Why does this not work? S A will, will be a sign hash of G A mod B and not G T mod B. Okay, that's right. Okay, so they will compute different hash values here, right? Because Alice receives this, so that's what goes into her hash. Bob sent this, so that's what goes into his, his hash. So they sign different things, okay? So they do not verify here, so the authentication fits. In particular, um, Alice would compute this thing on her computer, right? Because she's got G to the T, and she's got G to the A, and she's got G to the AT mod P, whereas Bob would compute G to the T, G to the B, G to the BT mod P. So those would not be the same. Okay, so you could not, so the authentic, so the point here is what? The point is Trudy could do this man in the middle attack, but it doesn't buy her anything because it fails. the authentication fails. Okay, so they never use the key. Okay, so, so that's okay. It's not really.